Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and we're this evening we're on chapter number 53 entitled Krishna Kidnaps Rukmini. <laughs> So at the end of the previous chapter, we heard how Rukmini's marriage had been arranged to Sishupal, who is the enemy of Lord Krishna. So Rukmini had written a letter to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was in Dwarka and the, the, she gave it to her a Brahmana there in where and Rukmini was in her father's place in Vidarbha and uh, it sent the Brahman to go to Dwarka and give the letter to Lord Krishna. So the, the Brahmana met with Lord Krishna and gave the letter to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna was very pleased. And Lord Krishna shook hands with the Brahmana and, and told him, I'm very, I'm very glad to hear that Rukmini wants to marry me. And Krishna said, I'm also eager to marry her. Krishna said, I'm always thinking about this daughter of Maharaj Bhishmaka. This is the father of Rukmini. Bhishmaka is the father. So Krishna said, I'm always thinking about the daughter of Maharaj Bhishmaka, meaning he's always thinking about Rukmini. And Krishna said, sometimes I can't sleep at night because I'm thinking of her. So Krishna told the Brahmana, he said, I know that this marriage of Rukmini with Sishupal has been arranged by her older brother. And Krishna said, this brother of Rukmini has arranged her marriage to Sishupal just to be, to show his, his dislike for me. 
ริชนาบอกว่าข้ารู้ว่าที่ชิชูปาเนี่ยพยายามจัดงานที่พี่ชายคนโตของรุกมินีจะแต่งงานให้กับชิชูปาเนี่ยเพื่อที่จะแสดงว่าไม่ชอบข้ามากแค่ไหน so all the people in the kingdom they all thought that Rukmini would make a good wife for Krishna, and even Rukmini's father thought that she would be a good wife for Krishna. But this older brother of Rukmini, and his name is Rukmi, he. Was a friend of Sishupal, and they didn't like Krishna. So you see the system. In the past, the young girl's marriage was arranged by the elders, like her older brother would arrange the marriage. การแต่งงานของสาวของของหญิงสาวเนี่ยจะถูกจัดงานขึ้นโดยพี่ชายคนโต And the younger the the girl she has to get married she has to do it because they arranged the marriage for her she just she has to do it she cannot protest แล้วเด็กสาวเนี่ยก็ไม่สามารถที่จะต่อต้านได้เพราะว่าถูกจัดการจัดงานแต่งมาแล้วยังไงก็จะต้องทำตาม So Lord Krishna said, "He said, 'I'm going to give a, I'm going to teach these princes a good lesson. They didn't want me to marry her, but I'm going to teach them a good lesson.'" Krishna ก็บอกว่าไม่เป็นไรเดี๋ยวจะต้องสั่งสอนหน่อยเดี๋ยวจะสั่งสอนเหล่าเจ้าชายนี้อย่างดีเลยที่ไม่ยอมอยากให้แต่งงานกับลูกนี้ So example is given, just like you can take fire out of wood. So in the same way, when dealing with these demonic princes, I shall bring Rukmini, like fire from the wood. <laughs> I'll bring Rukmini out of the from the presence of all of these kings. So the Brahmana told Krishna that the marriage is arranged in a few days. You don't have much time. You have to go immediately. So Krishna told his chariot driver Daruka. To get the horses and the chariot ready. Krishna ก็บอกสารธีชื่อว่าดารุกะให้ผูกบังเหียนมาแล้วก็ราชรถแล้วก็เตรียมตัวที่จะออกทันที So Krishna has four special horses to pull the chariot. Krishna มีม้าพิเศษสี่ตัวที่จะต้องผูกเชือกแล้วก็ไป One horse is called Saibia, and it's a green. It's a green color. The second horse is called Sugriva, and that is, and that is a grayish color. The third horse is Mega Pushpa, and that's the color of a cloud, a new cloud. And the fourth horse is called Mega. Uh, no, the fourth fourth horse is called Balahaka, and that's the color of ashes. So they brought the Daruka got the horses ready and yoked them to the chariot. And Krishna brought the Brahmana up on the chariot to sit with him, and they immediately set off. They left Dwarka. Krishna ก็บอกกับสารธีแล้วก็เตรียมพร้อมมาเพื่อกับเพื่อที่จะขึ้นไปราชรถแล้วก็มีให้พรามเนี่ยขึ้นไปนั่งข้างๆกับพระองค์แล้วก็เดินทางออกจากดวาริกาทันที
So they left work in the evening and they got to Vidar, we got to Vidarbha in the morning, early morning. Dwarka is, Dwarka is over on the on the west coast. And oh yeah, it's on the west coast. Dwarka is on the west coast and Vidarbha is up in the north. So it was a long way. They had to go the whole night. So, uh, uh, so they, it was a, it was more than a thousand miles, but the horses were so fast that they reached that same went within one night. So the father of Rukmini, King Bishmaka, he was not eager, he was not happy to give his daughter to Sishupal in marriage. He wanted that Krishna should marry his daughter. But he had to do, he had to follow the desire of his eldest son. The eldest son wanted his sister to marry Sishupa. So in preparation for the marriage, the king arranged to decorate the whole city of Vidarbha. And they sprinkled water all over the street. This, all the streets were nice and clean. Because India is tropical, so it's quite hot, so there's always a lot of dust. So every day they should sprinkle the water on the roads to keep the dust down. But Calcutta is a big city. You have to sprinkle water twice a day there. So the capital of Vidarbha is called Kundina, and that city, the city of Kundina was decorated with flags and there were gates put up everywhere. They made it a very big festival. And all the people, they all dressed very nicely, they washed their clothes and they had sandalwood pulp on and they wore pearl necklaces and flower garlands. And the brahmanas and the priests were given a lot of food to eat. And they were given cows in charity and they were given also wealth in charity. And they were chanting all the Vedic hymns to create an auspicious atmosphere. So Rukmini was very, very beautiful and she had a beautiful set of smiling teeth and she was very clean and pure. 
ส่วนรูปมินิเนี่ยก็สวยมากเป็นพิเศษเลยนะวันนี้แล้วก็มีฟันรอยยิ้มที่สวยงามมากๆแล้วก็ดูสะอาดดูบริสุทธิ์ผุดผ่องมากๆ And a sacred thread was tied on her wrist. And she was wearing silken cloth to cover her body, both upper and lower parts. And she was wearing silken cloth to cover her body, both upper and lower parts. And the priests were giving her protection by chanting mantras from the different Vedas. And even they were chanting mantras from the Atharva Veda, which has special prayers to pacify the influence of the different stars. แม้กระทั่งมีการอ่านจากอาจารย์อารวัตเบดาเพราะถือว่าเป็นพิธีที่สําคัญเป็นบทมนต์ที่สําคัญเพื่อที่จะบูชาพวกดวงดาวต่างๆหรือลานไม่ดีต่างๆใช่มาเรจบิสมาร์กก็ was very expert in taking care of the brahmanas and priests and he gave them good honor and gave them a lot of charity มาราบิชมาเนี่ยบิชมาคาเนี่ยเป็นผู้ที่มีประสบการณ์ในการมีปฏิสัมพันธ์กับพราหมณ์แล้วก็นักบวชเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยท่านก็มีการทําพิธีให้เกียรติพราหมณ์อย่างดีโดยการถวายต่างๆที่ขอต่างๆ He gave them gold and silver and he gave them grains mixed with molasses ท่านก็ถวายทองคำถวายเงินถวายธัญพืชผสมน้ำเชื่อม And he gave away cows which were decorated with cloth and ornaments. และมีการทำบุญถวายบัวที่ประดับไปด้วยเครื่องประดับทองคำต่างๆจำนวนมหาศาล Now Sishupala's father, he also came. Sishupala's father is called Damagosh. พ่อของชิชุปาเนี่ยบิดาของชิชุปาก็มาในงานนี้ด้วยบิดาของชิชุปาชื่อว่าดามาโกช์ So ชิชุปาส์ father was doing all kinds of rituals to create auspiciousness and good luck for his son แล้วบิดาของชิชุปาก็มีการทำวิธีกรรมเพื่อที่จะให้เกิดความโชคดีในครอบครัวของตนเองเช่นเดียวกัน The name ดามาโกช Damagosh means that he is able to control the citizens when they are not regulated. He can t- he he he's good at cutting down and curbing them, stopping them from disturbing things. ชื่อ Damagosh เนี่ยจะแปลได้ว่าผู้ที่มีศักศักยภาพยอดเยี่ยมในการลงโทษผู้กระทำผิดกฎหมาย So Damagosh. การปกต่ำลงแล้วก็เหมือนกับผู้คนที่สามารถควบคุมราษฎรได้อย่างดี So Dhamma means good at stopping, at curbing down, stopping people from doing things, and Gosha means famous. Dhamma เนี่ยจะหมายความว่าทำให้ตกต่ำลงโกชาก็หมายถึงมีชื่อเสียงหมายถึงว่าควบคุมคนที่มีชื่อเสียงไอ้ควบคุมผู้ที่ตกต่ำลงได้อย่างดีนั่นเอง So Dhamma Gosha was famous for controlling the citizens. ดามังโกชเนี่ยจึงมีชื่อเสียงในการที่ควบคุมประชาราษฎรของตนเอง And he was not a devotee of Krishna, so he thought if Krishna came there to disturb the marriage, that he would he would bring his army and they would they would attack Krishna and they would cut Krishna down. ดามังโกชเนี่ยบิดาของชิชุปาและไม่ใช่สาวกของกริชนาเพราะฉะนั้นก็เลยคิดว่าถ้าสมุทรกริชนาจะมาก่อขวนในวันสมรสเนี่ยจะจัดการด้วยการส่งกำลังทหารแล้วก็จะจัดการกับกิชาอย่างแน่นอน So d a m a g o s h did many rituals and then he brought his army he had different elephants and they were elephants were all decorated with ornaments golden necklaces and different ornaments d a m a g o s h ก็จัดทำพิธีกรรมที่เป็นมงคลต่างๆแล้วก็มีการนำช้างที่เ
ประดับประดาด้วยสร้อยทองคำต่างๆมากมายมา And he had such a big army. This d a m a g o s h had such a big army and so many soldiers with him that people could see that he wasn't just coming for the marriage, but he was actually coming to fight. And of course, he wants to fight Krishna. <laughs> okay. When so when Rukmini's father Maharaj Bishmaka heard that d a m a g o s h and all his pet men had come, then he had to receive them, and he made nice arrangements for them to stay where to stay and for their food. บิชมาคามาได้บิชมาคารู้ด้วยพวกดาดดามากูชคือฝั่งของชิชปาลมาเนี่ยก็มีการออกไปต้อนรับอย่างดีออกไปข้างหน้าเพื่อที่จะต้อนรับพวกเขา It's a Vedic system that when the girl gets married, her father has to receive all the people and he has to accommodate them for two or three days until the marriage is over. มันเป็นระบบการสมรสแบบพระเวทของเราก็คือถ้าสมมติมีการต้อนรับในปีดาของฝั่งเจ้าสาวก็จะต้อนรับผู้คนจากฝั่งเจ้าบ่าวจนกระจัดจัดงานเสร็จเรียบร้อยแล้วก็ดูแลเป็นเวลาสักสองสามวัน So d a m a g o s h this father of Sishupal, he came with thousands of men. ส่วนดามาโกชปีดาของ Sishupal เนี่ยเอาคนมาไม่เนาแค่เอามาเป็นรายพันคนเลย And he, along with him, there were other kings like Jarasandha, and Dantavakra, and Vidurata, and Pondraka. No, not Vidura. v i d u r a v i d u r a t a I'm sorry, Vidura Tala, Gami, Kaunda, Ka. Not Vidura, Vidurata. Yes, Maharaj, Vidurata. Sorry. And Pondra. So, these were all enemies of King Krishna. These were all the enemies of Krishna. So everybody knew Rukmini was actually meant. She was natural. Meant to be the wife of Lord Krishna. But her big brother Rukmi, he wanted. He was arranging her marriage to Sishupal. But all the citizens, all the people in the Vidarbha. But they all knew that Rukmini is meant to be married to Krishna. And there was a rumor, and that all through, all among all the people, they heard that Rukmini had sent a messenger to Krishna to tell her, to tell him that he should come and get her. So all the soldiers of the of the d a m a g o s h they were all waiting. They thought if Krishna comes, we have to stop him. We don't want Krishna to kidnap Rukmini. So. Of course, they were all ready to give Krishna a fight, but at the same time, they were a little afraid because they knew they're not going to be able to defeat Krishna. So when Lord Balaram got the news that Krishna had gone away to Kundina, the capital of Vidarbha. And he gone only with a brahmana, and then he, Lord Balaram also knew that Sishupal was there with a big army, 
So Balaram thought he better go and help Krishna. So Krishna, or, or rather Balaram was worried that they would attack Krishna. So Balaram wanted to make an arrangement to help his brother, so he brought a big army of soldiers with him. And Balaram came with many people, elephants and horses. <coughs> 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 Elephants and horses and <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Hmm. They all came Balaram. with Lord Lord Balaram. So Rukmini, she had sent the Brahmana to do, to Dwarka with the letter, and she didn't know what was happening. So she was worried. She didn't know if Krishna is going to come in time before the marriage. Because the Brahmana hadn't come back and she hadn't seen Krishna yet, so she didn't know what's going to happen. Maybe I'll have to marry Sishupal. And she thought, oh my gosh, if I have to marry Sishupal, oh, how unfortunate it will be for me. You don't say, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we also in, say in Thai. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Rukmini said, what was thinking, there's only one night left and my marriage is tomorrow morning. Not even the Brahmana and Krishna, they have not come yet. So she was very worried. And she thought maybe Krishna's got some reason, maybe Krishna's rejected her, maybe he doesn't want to marry her. And if Krishna doesn't want to marry her, then the Brahmana would be disappointed and the Brahmana wouldn't come back either. So she was thinking maybe different reasons like this. But then at the same time, she's thinking, maybe they'll come any minute. And Rukmini thought, maybe the demigod, maybe the devas, like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and Durga, maybe they're not pleased with me. Yeah, when the devas, when the demigods are not properly worshipped, then they get angry. Just like when Indra found out that the bridge Basi people were not going to worship him. So 
So that time Indra sent the rain clouds to try to destroy Vrindavan. He was so angry. So Rukmini was thinking because she did not worship Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma very much, maybe they were angry with her. And maybe the goddess Durga, she's taken the, she's she's the wife of Lord Shiva, so she must take the side of her husband. One of Lord Shiva's names is Rudra. And his wife is Rudrani. So Rudrani and Rudra, it, it, it's talk, it, these two names are used to, when you put people in distress, like it means you make, make people cry forever. So Durga is the daughter of the Himalayan mountains. One of her names is Girija, means the daughter of the Himalayan mountains. And Himalaya mountains are very cold and very hard, so she thought Goddess Durga must also be cold and hard-hearted. Actually, Rukmini, at this time, just before marriage, she was still a child. She was not very old. So she thought about the different demigods like that, just like the gopis worship Katyayani to get Krishna for their husband. Rukmini was thinking how to get Krishna for her husband. So she was thinking about the demigods, not for material benefit, but for for Krishna, to get Krishna. So it's not wrong if you pray to the demigods to get Krishna. So Ruk, Rukmini was, she was really thinking of Krishna. She was really thinking of Krishna. So she was thinking that the time for Govinda, it must, she thought it must be time for Krishna to come by now. Why is he not come? So she was actually crying, but nobody could see that she was crying. She hid her tears. And when, when she started to cry more, she, and she just closed her eyes. But at that time, then she began to feel auspicious symptoms started to appear. There was trembling in her eye and in her arm and in her thigh, in the left side of her body, trembling. So 
So that's something very auspicious. That's a good sign. Then Rukmini saw the Brahmana that she sent to Dwarka. And he he had sent the Brahmana into the palace just to let her know that he had come there. So then Rukmini, when she saw the Brahmana, then she understood that everything was good and she smiled and she asked about Krishna. And the Brahmana told Rukmini that yes, Krishna has already come and he's encouraged that he promises to take you away without fail. So Rukmini was so happy, she wanted to give charity to the Brahmana. She wanted to give everything she possessed to the Brahmana. But she had nothing suitable to give him, so she just offered him her obeisances. So, Prabhupada explains the meaning, the significance of offering obeisances. He said, when you're in debt to someone, when you you want to respect them, then you offer obeisances. So Rukmini, she showed that she would remain grateful to that Brahmana. So anybody who gets a favor of the goddess of fortune, like Rukmini, she's a goddess of fortune. Like then, so if you get the favor like this Brahmana, then you'll be always happy in material life. We want to, if you want to get the blessings of the Goddess of Fortune, then the husband and wife should live together without quarreling. Yeah, when the husband and wife live together peacefully, then the Goddess of Fortune bestows her blessings on them. So when King, when the king, the father of Rukmini, Bishmaka, when he heard that Krishna and Balaram had come there, had arrived there, then he was very happy and he welcomed them. He arranged a nice house for them to stay in and he brought all kinds of offerings and presents for them. He gave them honey and fresh washed clothes. Yeah, 
And so the, he was giving, like, the, he was taking care of all the different kings. There was Krishna and Balaram, and there was all these other kings like Sishupal and Jarasandha. Uh, so the king had to take care of them, everyone, according to their different positions. Some were stronger than others, some were older than others, and some were more materially powerful than others. So when the people of the city heard how Krishna and Balaram had come there, then they all came, they all wanted to see them, they wanted to see their beautiful forms. So they offered Krishna and Balaram their, uh, their respects. They were very pleased to see Krishna and Balaram come there. And they were all thinking that this Krishna, he's the right person to be Rukmini's husband. And they prayed to the personality of Godhead. They prayed to the Lord. Oh, if we have any pious activities which satisfied you, then be merciful to us and allow Rukmini to be your wife. So Rukmini was very popular with all the people, all the people in the kingdom, they all loved her and they prayed for her. So Rukmini came out of the palace and she's going to visit the temple of Ambika, who is the goddess, it's another name for goddess Durga, Ambika. So before her marriage, she has to go to the temple of Ambika and get blessings. So this shows that even 5,000 years ago, people were doing temple worship. It's not, a, it's not a new thing. It's a very old thing. It's been there for a many, many thousands and thousands of years. So there are some people who only believe in temple worship, or the, the rather they don't believe in temple worship, they only do Vedic rituals, they only do like fire yagya. They don't do temple worship. But we see here that even 5,000 years ago there was temple worship. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also said, if you worship the demigods, then you go to the planet of the demigods. So there are also many who worship the Supreme Lord.
the worship of the demigods, that's usually done to people like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and Lord Ganesh and the sun god and Durga. And even many royal families, the kings and the queens, their families, they would all worship Lord Shiva and Goddess Durga. And the, the other smaller demigods, they would be worshipped by the low-class people. But the, but the Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas, they would all worship Lord Vishnu. So the worship of demigods is not encouraged. It, you can do it, but it's only for the less intelligent people. And they do it only for material benefit. They don't get real spiritual benefit. So we see here Rukmini, she's the goddess of fortune. She is Lakshmi herself, but she's going to the temple of Goddess Durga. So she was going to the temple of the goddess Durga, but within her heart, she was always thinking of the lotus feet of Krishna. The ordinary people, when they go to the temple, they go with material desires and they go to ask for their material desires. But Rukmini, her only purpose in going to the temple was for Krishna. She was thinking about Krishna. So she was going to the temple and she had her mother with her by her side and all of her girlfriends were also with her, all the other girls her age, they were all with her and they were all going to the temple together. So there were many wives of the Brahmanas there, and there was wives of the Brahmanas, some of them were older, and they were chanting prayers for protection and for auspiciousness. So this is still the custom in India today. People go to this temple of the demigods to get blessings. So there was this procession, all the ladies, they were going, Rukmini there with her mother and all her friends and the Brahmana's wives, they were all going together to the temple and there was a lot of noise, they were blowing conch shells and they were playing different musical instruments. Uh, 
เสียงดนตรีมีการเป่าสังมีการเล่นตีกรองมีเสียงดังมากมายเลยเหมือนกับเป็นการนำขบวน So although there was a lot of noise, it was all very sweet. It was all very pleasing to hear. And there were so many wives of the brahmanas. There were thousands of these brahmanas' wives, and they were all dressed very nicely. And they came and they give Rukmini nice garlands of different flowers. And they gave her different colorful clothes. And Things which she could use to worship Lord Shiva and Goddess Durga with. So we said the old the old ladies they knew the mantras and they would chant prayers to Lord Shiva and Durga for protection. And Rukmini came before the deities, and she speaks to the deity, and she says, "My dear Goddess Durga, I offer my obeisances unto you." And I offer also to your children, your children Lakshmi and Saraswati and Ganesh and Kartikeya. So Goddess Durga, she's always worshipped with her four children. Two boys and two girls. So she prayed to the Mother Durga in this way that uh, usually people they will pray to Durga for material benefit. But Rukmini, she just prayed to Krishna. She just prayed to have. To, she prayed to Durga to have Krishna as her husband. And she prayed that the deity would be pleased with her and bless her with that benediction. So because she's worshiping the demigods to get Krishna, it's all right. Nothing wrong with that. So Rukmini was making offerings to the deity. She. There are many presents she was giving to the deities. There were diff there was water, different kinds of flames, incense, garments, garlands. And there was different kinds of food. Some food cooked with ghee, like puri and kachori. And she offered fruits and sugar cane, betel nut and spices. 
อย่างเช่นอ้อยน้ำอ้อยมาแล้วก็เครื่องเทศหลายๆอย่าง So she did all the offerings according to the instructions of the Brahmana ladies. And then the Brahmana ladies they gave some prasadam to Rukmini. And Rukmini offered her obeisances to the ladies and to Goddess Durga. And then Rukmini took the hand of one of her friends. And Rukmini t o o k the hand of one of her friends. And she came out of the temple. So all the princes, all the princes and the visitors who had come for the wedding, they were all outside the temple, and they wanted to see Rukmini. And all these princes, all these the sons of these so many kings. They were all eager to see her because they'd heard about her how she's so beautiful. And they all thought they would like to have Rukmini as their wife. And. They people were thinking that Rukmini is so beautiful. She's made by, she's made by the Creator, the God Himself, just to bewilder the minds of these materialistic men. So her body was so nice that she was thin. Her middle, her waist was thin. And her hips were jewel covered with jewels, and she had pink lips. And the beauty of her face was very wonderful. Her face. She, it was just like her face had been painted by an artist. It was so perfect, so beautiful. And then, her beauty was so attractive to people that the, when the princes looked at her. They would just faint. They would just fall over, unconscious, because she was just so beautiful. But Rukmini was very humble. She wasn't proud, although she was very beautiful. She wasn't proud at all. And she would just smile at people like an innocent girl. And she knew at any moment Krishna is going to come and take her away. So uh, these young princes, they were seeing Rukmini, and they were full of lust, but they had no hope to ever take the hand of Rukmini. Some of the young princes they would compare 
themselves to Rukmini, they think, I'm a good match for her, I'm also a very good-looking young man, I'd make a good husband for her. But Rukmini was not interested in any of these men. She just wanted Krishna to come and take her away. So while she was thinking in that way, suddenly she saw Krishna there, just in front of, just nearby. Now Rukmini had never seen Krishna before, but when she saw him, she knew this must be Krishna. Because she'd heard all the descriptions about Krishna. And she when she when she saw Krishna, she knew this is the one. He is the one. So Krishna didn't worry about anybody else around him. He just came forward and he came and took Rukmini and he put her on his chariot and, and he just drove off with her. And Krishna didn't even have any fear. He wasn't worried about all these other kings. Krishna took Rukmini away just like a lion takes a deer from jackals. The jackals are only little small creatures. The lion is big, powerful. So the jackals, they cannot stop a lion doing something. And when Krishna took Rukmini away, at that time Lord Balaram came with his big army. So, so all the other kings, they couldn't do anything. They saw Lord Balaram there with a big army. How can they stop Krishna? He's already touched Rukmini. He's already taken her away. So when they with the other kings they saw that they were they, they couldn't do anything. Now Jarasanda Jarasanda is saying, Oh, how is this? Krishna is taking Rukmini away and we're not opposing him. Now Jarasanda Jarasandha said, we are losing our reputation. Jarasandha said, we are just like, he is just like a jackal. And he's taken the booty from the lion. We're the lions. And he's the jackal. He come and he's taken everything away from us. Actually, they were the jackals. Krishna was the lion. But they're saying we're the lion. Krishna's the jackal. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So this is the end of the chapter, Krishna kidnaps Rukmini. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, Hare Krishna Kuru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our call is to Shila Papupada. Hare Krishna Kamataji. Hare Krishna Kha. Pakistana Song Sadang, Lub Lak Chakavalu, Lub Lak Dun ทุริโยทันในสภาของของฮัสตินาฮัสตินาคุระแต่เหตุใดพวกเขาถึงคิดว่าเหตุใดพวกเขาถึงยังอยากต่อสู้หรือว่าคิดว่ากิสนาเป
And Krishna is not going to fight. So Krishna showed the universal form, it didn't influence anything, didn't change anything. Understand Prabhu? I understand Guru Maharaj. <coughs> okay, next question, Shaya Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Tanavar Panam, Pisaxi, my humble obeisances, all glory to Sila Bhagavan. Guru Maharaj, um, I need you to explain about um, Vishnu Tattva and Mahat Tattva all have different info from um, incarnation of Bhagavan. Um, can you explain for about that? Why do you want to know? Um, so I don't know. Um, can you pray about this? I'm going to go to the ที่สงสัยว่าเอ่อคําว่าวิชนุตัตวาเหมือนแบบเหมือนอวตารไหมแล้วก็พอไปเจออีกคํานึงคงมหัตตัตวาก็งงมากเลยก็เลยอยากให
So you get 24 elements, the material nature is made up of 24 elements. So the, the, the creation, before the creation, all of these elements are unmanifested. They're there, but they're, they exist because they're eternal, but they're not manifested. So when they're in the unmanifested stage, it's called the Pradhan. But then when the material, when the modes of material nature come into existence, then you get, they become the Mahatattva, they become manifest. When they become manifested, they're all mixed together. As the Mahatattva is all mixed together. All the elements, they're all mixed together. Just like when you make halibut, when you make halibut, you put many things in the halibut. You put butter, and you put sugar, and you put suji, and you put milk. It all goes there in the halibut. But you cannot pick out the sugar, you cannot pick out the... it's all mixed together. So the same, the same way, all the elements are mixed together. That's the form of the Mahatattva. It's a manifest stage of the different elements of creation when they're all mixed together. Now, do you understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, Okay, now she say, now she says she understand about Mahatattva. But what about Vishnu Tattva? She wants to understand more of Maharaj. So Vishnu is the Supreme Lord. That's Lord Vishnu in this in this in the spiritual world. Lord Vishnu. So there are so many different expansions of Vishnu. He expands himself in so many different forms, in so many different incarnations. They all have their own eternal forms in the spiritual world. And then there are three Vishnu forms which are Purusha avatars and they help but they do the work of creation. There's Mahavishnu laying in the Kasho ocean. And Mahavishnu breathing out, and all the universes are coming out of its pores of his skin. And then Vishnu expands himself into each of these universes. So when he enters into each universe, he becomes Garbhodaka Shaya Vishnu. 
ต่พอเข้าพอเข้าไปในแต่ละจักรวาลเนี่ยจะกลายเป็นกาลบดดกชาชายวิชนุ Then the beginning is Karana Dakshayi Vishnu. He's laying in the k a s h i o ocean. Vishnu lang yepen Karan Dakshayi. Sorry, Karan. The name is. Karana Dakshayi Vishnu. Yes, Karana Dakshayi Vishnu. Pen um pen Vishnu alag lechay halakatoma. Naitala chakawan. So Karana Dakshayi Vishnu becomes Karbo Dakshayi Vishnu into each universe. And he lays in, he, from his body, perspiration comes out, and he makes an ocean in the bottom of the universe. And he lays on the ocean. That ocean is called Gar Garbhadak Ocean. And then Lord. Garbhadaka Shai Vishnu, he lays down in the Garbhadaka Ocean, and a lotus flower comes out from his navel, and Lord Brahma takes birth there. And then g a r b h a d a k s h a i Vishnu expands himself as s h i r o d a k a s h a i Vishnu to be the super soul in the hearts of all living entities. g a r b h a d a k s h a i Vishnu เนี่ยก็จะแบ่งภาคออกมาเป็นชิโรดักชัยวิชโนอยู่ในหัวใจของเรามวลชีวิตทุกทุกดวง And he light resides also in the milk ocean at s w e t a d w i p แล้วท่านก็อยู่ที่ Swetadweep ด้วยในมหาสมุทรนำนม So this is the Purusha avatar. They're all Vishnu. They're all Vishnu t a t v a Just like in the Pancha t a t v a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, and Advaita Acharya are all Vishnu t a t v a They're not ordinary jivas. They're Vishnu t a t v a Right, we are jivas, but Lord Nichananda, Lord Chaitanya, Advaita Acharya, they are Vishnu Tattva. They are on the level of God. So when we worship them, you can see we will put we can put lotus flowers on their lotus feet. We don't put lotus flowers on the feet of any ordinary person. We only put lotuses on the feet of the Supreme Lord. เวลาที่เราบูชาพวกพระองค์เนี่ยเราก็จะเห็นว่าอันไหนที่เป็นวิชุตตัวเนี่ยเราก็จะสามารถวางดอกบัวไว้ที่พระบาทรูปดอกบัวได้แต่ถ้าเป็นองค์อื่นที่ไม่ได้เป็นมาจากวิชุตตัวเนี่ยเราก็จะไม่ไม่มีการวางรูปดอกบัววางดอกบัวไว้ที่พระบาท So when we say they're Vishnu t a t v a it means they're God. They're the supreme personality of Godhead. Lord n a s r i n g a d e v is Vishnu t a t v a Lord Varaha Dev, Varaha is Vishnu t a t v a Prabhupada is not Vishnu t a t v a p r a l a d Maharaj is not Vishnu t a t v a Understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. And how about p r i t u Maharaj? p r i t u Maharaj? Hmm. Yes. p r i t u Maharaj is Shakta Shakta Vesha Avatar. Pen Shakta Vesha Avatar. And how different, Guru Maharaj? Huh? Um, Kanupriya, he is so sad. Our Avatar, Kap, Tumen Kavat, Lau Avatar, Kong Pitu Maharaj, Kap, 
บิชนูตาวาคือแตกต่างกันยังไงเข้าใจพี่ไหมอวตารของอะไรนะอวตารต่างๆกับบิชนูตัดตัวต่างกันยังไงเออเออเออเออโอเคเข้าใจพี่ไหม She want to understand what about avatar and Vishnu Tattva. What's the difference in these two? Avatar has the meaning somebody coming down from the spiritual world. Avatar มีความหมายว่ามีการลงมาในโลกวัตถุมันคนละความหมายอ่ะพี่เข้าใจไหม Vishnu Tattva means on the same level as Vishnu. วิชโนตัตัวคืออยู่ในระดับเดียวกันกับวิชโนก็คือเป็นวิชโนตัตัวอะไรที่มาจากวิชโนทั้งหมดเป็นวิชโนตัตัวก็ยังงงอยู่อะอยู่เข้าใจว่าอะไรอะกันโอเปียเข้าใจเดี๋ยวเราค่อยคุยกันก็ได้เออคือพี่ก็แยกคือเขาเข้าใจว่ามันคล้ายๆอะแต่ว่าพี่ไม่สามารถแยกออกมาได้ว่าอันไหนคืออันไหนเข้าใจพี่ไหมแต่เดี๋ยวไปลองคุยกันรอบๆก็ได้โอเคโอเคกุลมาราช we can discuss later she is there no tell her what's the problem กุลมาราบอกงงตรงคือคือพี่ยังไม่เข้าใจว่าอย่างแบบอย่างนรสิมาเดฟอย่างเงี้ยก็ลงมาก็เป็นวิชนุตัตวาก็เป็นอินคาเนชันด้วยเราแตกต่างกันยังไงอ่ะเข้าใจพี่ว่าเป็นวิชนุตัตตัวหมดไงมันคนละความหมายบุรุมาราชชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชีชี Uh, it's a meaning of coming down, but it, it's nothing. They also wish not that to arrive, very much. Yeah, yeah, right. Avatar means that somebody's come, some some form of Ava the Lord is coming down from the spiritual world. Avatar, แค่คือการลงมาอะไรที่เป็นอวตารทั้งหมดอยู่ในวิชโนตัตตัวพี่เข้าใจยังอะไรทั้งหมดที่อยู่ในอวตารเป็นวิชโนตัตตัวอวตารคือการลงมาวิชโนตัตตัวคืออะไรก็ตามที่เป็นอวตารก็คือยุเป็นวิชโนตัตตัว Just read the Why don't you just read the book Just read the book Tell me what you don't understand Where is it in the book Um ครูมาแบบให้อ่านให้อ่านในหนังสือแล้วมันอยู่ตรงไหนในหนังสือแล้วก็เอามาเอาไว้ตรงอ่านคือพี่ฟังเรื่องของปริตูมหาราชใช่ไหมแล้วทีเนี้ยเหมือนกับว่าเออเหมือนมันมันอีคัมเมนชันว่าวิชนุตัดว่าแต่พี่เคยถามอัตรังโกบาลประมวยอย่างปิปิตูมหาราชเป็นวิชนุตัดว่าแล้วแบบเขาอธิบายทีนึงแล้วแต่พี่ก็ยังไม่ค่อยเข้าใจอะไรอย่างเงี้ยว่าว่าทําไมมันถึงต่างต่างกันอะไรอย่างเงี้ยอืมชีเซจีชีปีดับบปริตูมาราชและเดนชีแฮสอัคเวชันอ่านเรื่องนี้และถามอัตรังกุมารปรุจีแต่ยังไม่ชี้แจว่าเขาไม่รู้เรื่องนี้จริงๆหมายความว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่ว่าแต่
Does she have a question or not? And she says she she don't understand for a long time, but she don't know how to ask Guru Oh, okay. Then she has to find a bit in the book. Tell me where it is in the book and let me read it, and I'll then I'll explain it to her. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I will find it and discuss you later. Okay. okay. All right. Ta uh, Yuvati Sachi has a question. Yes, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all Guru Chishtila Prabhupada. I have a small question. Uh, is Krishna Loka one planet only or there are some different planets? No, it's one, it's one planet. อ๋อโอเคขอบคุณมากมาตาจีถามคําถามว่าในคริชนาโลกานะคะมีแค่มีแค่แค่อาณาจักรเดียวใช่มั้ยหรือว่ามีอาณาจักรอื่นอีกอ